Okay, I'm Jeremy from Namecoin. I'm going to be talking about uh, some work I've been doing with uh, using Namecoin for human meaningful aliases of Monero addresses. Uh, so uh, for anyone wondering, this is my PGP key. Feel free to get out your phone really fast and take a photo in case you want to be able to verify my details later. Uh, I'll leave it there for about 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one. Okay, great. All right, so, uh, as we all know, Monero addresses are quite long. Uh, they're currently 95 characters, which is quite a lot longer than Bitcoin addresses, uh, which is, you know, already not great UX, but, you know, we, you could make an argument it's manageable. Uh, but uh, they're about to get quite longer. Uh, I know there was a mention of Jamtis in an earlier talk today, and I believe there's going to be another talk about Jamtis in more detail later at MoneroCon, I think maybe tomorrow. can't remember exactly what the schedule is, but check out that talk. It's probably going to be good. Uh, but yeah, Jamtis is going to increase the length of Monero addresses to almost 200 characters. Uh, the main con contributor to this is Jamtis is going to add a third public key to Monero addresses. Uh, and, you know, this, this is, there's good reason for this. It improves privacy in lightweight clients, I believe. Uh, but this makes the UX issue of these very long Monero addresses uh, even worse. Um, now, I think some people in the Monero community readily recognize that this UX issue is a thing. Um, but I think there's also, to some extent, some denial within the community about how bad these really long addresses are. Like, I've seen people on, on the Monero subreddit say stuff like, oh, no one ever, you know, manually types uh, cryptocurrency addresses. Well, actually, some people do do that. In fact, I do that quite a lot. Uh, if you have security requirements that say you can't use a camera, uh, well, then QR codes aren't really going to work. Uh, if you're using air gap systems, uh, then, you know, uh, copying and pasting may not work very well either. And so manually copying an address actually is uh, quite useful uh, for security purposes. And it would be nice if the UX didn't make that impossibly difficult. But as I said, this extra length really is important for very critical security and privacy functionality. So we have a conflict here between two different design goals. These are both very valid design goals. What can we do? So show of hands here, who is familiar with Namecoin? Okay, this is, a, this is quite a lot of the audience. Okay, great. For anyone who is not familiar with Namecoin, uh, it's a naming system similar to DNS, but it's implemented as a merge mine sidechain of Bitcoin. So that is to say, uh, you can mine Bitcoin and then also uh, mine some Namecoins as a byproduct. As a result, it has a very high hash rate. Uh, in fact, it, uh, the hash rate uh, at some times has actually been even higher than that of Bitcoin, due to some interesting historical reasons. Uh, Namecoin is using the .bit top-level domain, uh, sort of similar to how uh, Tor Onion services use the .onion top-level domain. Uh, so we were the first project that was ever forked from Bitcoin uh, way back in 2011. And interestingly, we actually have exactly the same birthday as Monero, which is kind of cool. Uh, Namecoin was released on April 18th, 2011, and the Monero came out exactly three years later. So that's you know kind of some cool symbolism. Um, in terms of the most high profile user that you may have heard of, uh, show of hands, who here has heard of the Shadow Brokers? Okay, it's a lot of the audience. Um, anyone not familiar with the Shadow Brokers? Uh, they published a bunch of NSA leaks on a website that was actually using a Namecoin domain. Uh, a lot of people don't know they were using a Namecoin domain because the media outlets that saw the domain name thought it was something else because media outlets are bad doing basic research. Shocking, huh? Okay, so the thing is, Namecoin is not just for pointing domain names to IP addresses. You can also use Namecoin as a generic public key infrastructure. So for example, let's say you want to use HTTPS on your website, but you don't want to trust public certificate authorities you can put a TLS public key into the Namecoin blockchain right next to your IP address. And you can use that to avoid trusting certificate authorities. Uh, similarly, you can put a Tor Onion service uh, into your Namecoin name and use that to get a friendly alias for your Onion service. And most importantly for this audience, 
you can use Namecoin to get friendly aliases for cryptocurrency addresses as well. So this concept of using Namecoin for cryptocurrency address aliases, it doesn't really make sense for Bitcoin due to privacy reasons. The problem is Bitcoin doesn't have ECDH stealth addresses. And so if you put a Bitcoin address into a Namecoin record, then if lots of people send money to that uh, uh, address, well, then everyone will see that you're all sending money to the same address. So this is really bad for privacy. However, conveniently, Monero does have stealth addresses, and that totally sidesteps the issue. So it actually fits pretty well. So an example of how you can do this is you can open a Namecoin wallet, and let's say you register the Namecoin domain name example.bit. Uh, and you assign this uh, value here. This is, as you can see, just a JSON object. It creates a DNS TXT record that contains a Monero recipient address. Uh, so you can do that in order to act as a recipient. And then as the sender, uh, your friend would enter example.bit as the destination in a Monero wallet, and voila, the money winds up in your Monero address. So Monero users care a lot about anonymity, of course. And anonymity was historically a really big pain point for Namecoin. It was really hard for quite a long time to register Namecoin names anonymously, which I think quite understandably was a deal breaker for any kind of Monero-related usage. Uh, and that's the main reason why uh, we didn't really push this use case very much. Um, but uh, things are improving. Uh, so there have been four main components of being able to register Namecoin names anonymously. Uh, so there's the network layer using Tor, there's P2P linkability using a full node, blockchain linkability, you want anonymous coin selection, and acquiring the name coins, you want anonymous exchange. I'm going to go into more details on those in the next few slides. So the first requirement is, of course, you want to run your name coin wallet over Tor. This is hopefully self-explanatory. Uh, Namecoin has two wallets. There's Namecoin Core, which is a full node. There's Electrum NMC, which is a lightweight wallet. Uh, they both support Tor. Uh, but there was a catch for a while, which is that I had to patch uh, the Electrum code base to support stream isolation. Uh, show of hands, who here is familiar with Tor stream isolation? Okay, that's actually more people than I expected, to be honest. Uh, it's kind of a niche feature, but it's really important. Tor stream isolation makes sure that different activities you're doing with Tor go over separate Tor circuits so that people can't see, oh, they, all these different things came from the same Tor exit relay, you must all be the same person. Uh, so upstream Electrum for Bitcoin did not support stream isolation, and I had to patch it to support this. I'm in the process of, of upstreaming that to Electrum, but in the meantime, Electrum NMC uh, or, uh, supports this now. So uh, that is basically solved now. Uh, the next requirement is that you want to run a full node. And the issue here is if you're using a lightweight wallet uh, like Electrum NMC, uh, and you're using some uh, Electrum X server that some third party is running, uh, they can see whether you've registered two different aliases for, say, two different Monero ad addresses. They can see that there's common ownership. Uh, so if you're using Namecoin Core, the full node, you're good. You don't have to worry about that. If you're using Electrum NMC, you can run your own Electrum X server uh, that links to your own full node. And the blockchain for Namecoin is small enough that uh, this is actually very minimally invasive. It does not require much storage. It does not require much time to synchronize. Uh, this is mainly because we are only storing naming data in our blockchain. We're not storing, you know, crypto kitties and all sorts of other, uh, you know, uh, uh, crypto scam of the week, like, uh, like, you know, Ethereum is or whatever. So uh, we actually have a relatively small blockchain. That said, if you don't have multiple aliases, or if you do, but you're okay with them being linkable to each other, this doesn't really matter. You don't need to worry about running a full node in that particular case. But we do still recommend it simply because not everyone is able to gauge whether that is a problem for them. Another thing that uh, you need is anonymous coin selection. Uh, show of hands, who here is familiar with coin control in Bitcoin? Okay, this is almost everyone. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with, with coin control, it lets you specifically choose which 
transaction inputs get used in your transaction so you can avoid accidentally linking different activities together on the blockchain. Uh, so in Namecoin, we have a special automatic version of this uh, called anonymous coin selection. The idea is that uh, it keeps track of which names are linked to a given coin that was used to pay for something, and then it doesn't use those coins if you're working with a different name. Uh, so I implemented this in Electrum NMC uh, a few years ago. Uh, Rose Turing, uh, my colleague, is planning to implement this in Namecoin Core as well, fairly soon. Um, again, if you don't have multiple aliases, or if you don't care about your multiple aliases being linked to each other, this does not matter as much. But again, we still recommend that you do this. And the fourth requirement is acquiring your name coins anonymously. So you want an exchange that's anonymous. Uh, this was the last missing component, being able to obtain name coins without your payment information being linked to your, yourself via whatever exchange you bought it from. However, I have an announcement. So if you check out the name coin name atomic-trophy.bit, uh, you will see this wonderful message that I graffitied into the Namecoin blockchain uh, just over a month ago. Uh, it's a, if, you, if you can't read the message I graffitied, it says, this is the first ever Namecoin domain name to be atomically, anonymously registered with Monero. And then I greet a bunch of uh, people who uh, uh, helped uh, in some way. Uh, so, uh, how did I do this, you ask? So what I did behind the scenes was I ported Farcaster to work with Namecoin. Uh, show of hands, who here is familiar with Farcaster? Okay, it's a lot of people, great. Uh, so for anyone not familiar with Farcaster, it lets you do atomic trades between Monero and Bitcoin. So I ported it to work with Namecoin instead of Bitcoin. So you can uh, start out with some Monero, trade those for Namecoins atomically, and now you have Namecoins that are not linked to, uh, to your own identity. The code is really messy right now. Um, have I mentioned I, that Farcaster is written in Rust, and this was my first time messing with Rust? So yeah, um, I need to improve my Rust skills a bit. Uh, once I've cleaned up the code, I will publish it. Uh, huge thank you to the Farcaster devs uh, for making some really awesome code. I was really impressed at how good the UX was, to be honest. So. As you may know, uh, there's this thing called Open Alias. Show of hands who has seen Open Alias before? Okay, so it's a lot of people. Uh, Monero wallets already support Open Alias already, and Open Alias basically lets you do aliases for Monero addresses using DNS. Now obviously, DNS by itself is not really great for this, because uh, DNS is, is a security and privacy nightmare. But Namecoin is interoperable with DNS. If you install Namecoin locally, it will run a DNS server on localhost. Uh, and it will supply exactly the information that OpenAlias wants if you use the uh, JSON object that I showed on a previous slide. So Namecoin should work with Monero, with Monero wallets quite trivially using OpenAlias as a compatibility layer. And a side benefit of this is when you install Namecoin, it also gives you local DNSSEC validation for just standard DNS domains. So installing Namecoin will actually improve uh, your uh, security for doing open alias, uh, even if you're not using Namecoin directly. So, uh, show of hands, who here is familiar with Monero DNS? Okay, almost no one here has seen Monero DNS. Okay, no worries. Uh, so this was a proposed uh, merge mine to an era side chain, uh, proposed quite a long time ago, uh, that would look very similar to Namecoin in terms of functionality. Um, Monero DNS, I think, may not really be the best approach, uh, even though it sounds good at first glance. And the reason why is trying to clone Monero's functionality into a naming system kind of runs into a mismatch of what the privacy needs are between a naming system versus a currency. And the main issue here is that Monero has a lot of privacy properties that are very expensive, but they don't help for naming very much. Uh, ring signatures and stealth addresses are supposed to prevent any two transactions from ever being linked to each other. But if you have two different transactions for the same alias, like let's say you just update what the name points to, because uh, you, you know, you, you, uh, so you uh, regenerated your Monero keys or something, you want to point it to a new address. Um, those will be linked anyway, because they have the same alias. Like, that's not something you can avoid 
and it's also harmless. So all of this extra inefficiency that ring signatures and ECDH add to the system, they wind up not giving you anything for this use case, but they cost you a lot in terms of uh, efficiency. And so I think Namecoin's privacy is probably good enough here, and Namecoin is a lot more scalable and efficient than trying to use uh, a Monero-like system uh, to do naming. Uh, another point here is that because Namecoin is very similar to Bitcoin, the code is almost exactly the same. We merge code from upstream Bitcoin routinely. Uh, we have a very uh, similar hash rate to Bitcoin. Namecoin could arguably have a security and stability advantage simply because Bitcoin gets a lot more auditing than Monero. Don't get me wrong, Monero does get pretty good auditing, but Bitcoin, I think it would be fairly uncontroversial to say, does get more auditing. On the other hand, Monero DNS is probably a better approach if you want to do more cutting edge experiments, uh, experiment with a more interesting crypto to add uh, more exotic features. So, you know, there's trade offs there. But you know what? That's okay because Monero DNS and Namecoin can coexist. Uh, they would use different top level domains with open alias. Uh, so there's no namespace collision. And we can collaborate, we can coexist. So I think it will be interesting to look into the possibility of perhaps bundling a Namecoin resolver with Monero wallets in the future. I'm curious to hear what people might think of this or how, what approaches might be best for implementing this. Um, so that, so that, that way you could just download a Monero wallet and you would automatically get uh, decentralized uh, aliases uh, using Namecoin without having to install anything extra. And a nice side benefit of this would be if you install a Monero wallet, you also would get wind up with getting DNSSEC validation and Namecoin resolution just for whatever other applications are on your system, like, I don't know, web browsers. You can have uh, DNSSEC in your web browser or Namecoin in your web browser, even though the web browser vendors don't give you that by default. So, you know, might be an interesting side benefit there. Um, I do want to give a brief thank you. Uh, yesterday I had a small computer disaster that would have disrupted my ability to give this talk. Uh, huge thank you to AJS and Rose Turing, Hugo Landau, and Adam Joseph for bailing me out of that. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm happy to take questions. I would love to hear about your thoughts about possible collaboration, things like that. Uh, I'm wearing a Namecoin t-shirt. Uh, should be easy to find me. Uh, my contact info is here. Uh, there's my PGP key again, if you want to uh, grab a sc screenshot of that. Uh, email addresses, etc. cetera. Uh, a few of my colleagues are also here. Uh, Rose Turing, uh, Jan Mani, uh, Hugo Landau, uh, they're here as well. So uh, feel free to talk to them as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I would really love to hear whatever interesting feedback you guys have on this stuff. So thank you.